So look, there's been a huge paradigm shift in what people are thinking is going to happen with interest rates over the next year, two years. Just a few months ago, everybody thought that the Fed would start cutting interest rates either this quarter or early next year. If you look at the headline, the way the Fed's talking right now, if you look at institutional money managers, endowments, what their betting is going to happen over the next year or two years, nobody now believes that interest rates are going to be cut anytime soon. As a matter of fact, Jerome Powell said they might be raising interest rates at the next meeting. So I think what's important for everybody to understand is this is a serious issue because interest rates are the single largest factor in whether or not the economy heads into recession and stays there or we start to see things turn around. So let's talk about that. Why in general does the Fed even raise interest rates? Because we see what's happening to the economy now. Things are starting to slow down. Well, remember, we were all locked up in COVID. We got a lot of money put into our pockets from PPP loans and all those things. Our savings rates skyrocketed. Why? Because you couldn't go and spend money anywhere. And then what happened to the supply chain? Supply chain shut down. So the things that you could buy we're in limited supply. Then the economy opened back up. And what happened? Limited supply, a lot of cash. The definition of inflation is too few goods being chased by too much money. And that's exactly what we saw happen. And remember, if you don't know, the Fed has what's called a dual mandate, meaning they only focus on two things. That is inflation and unemployment. And we've seen unemployment's been relatively tame. For the most part, People could still get jobs, but inflation has been a huge issue anywhere you look. And so the only tool the Fed has is what's called monetary policy. And that essentially is what they're doing right now, either raising interest rates to slow the economy down or lowering interest rates to speed it back up. And so to combat inflation, what they're doing is raising interest rates. Now, the thing you need to understand about the rise in interest rates is Historically, a lot of people will tell you rates aren't that high. Look at the 80s. People were at 17, 18% mortgages. The problem is the speed at which this has happened. It's called velocity. We were just at 3% mortgages a little over a year ago. Now we're pushing 8%. People have not had time to adjust. If you look at banks, they have not had time to adjust. There's over a trillion dollars in commercial real estate that needs to be refinanced. The problem there is the valuations are lower, occupancy rates have come down, in a lot of cases, interest rates have doubled. And so what does that mean? It means there's gonna be a lot of problems like we saw in 08, 09, in particular in the commercial space. So the most important thing you need to realize is we are headed for a liquidity crisis, I believe, where access to capital is gonna get much more difficult. If you've got open lines of credit, there's a good chance that those get cut, maybe even to zero. If you go out and get a mortgage now, you know what the rates are going to be. The other problem with that is revolving debt on credit cards is 25, 26%. We just pushed over a trillion dollars. So remember I said we had all that savings? That's gone. Savings rates are plummeting right now. Credit card rates are going up. So all of this means a lot less money going into the economy. You look at areas like construction, that's about 13% of the world economy. Now, Here's one thing I want you to know, especially you realtors, you mortgage brokers, bankers out there. A lot of people are looking at housing, residential housing, and saying, well, it's not breaking. What's, I don't see any problem. Well, that's really something that you need to understand. Why is that the case? Well, think about it. If you bought a home two, three years ago at a 3% mortgage, are you going to sell and move up now if new rates are at 8%? If you look at access to capital, New home starts are starting to slow down now. You look at Toll Brothers, that's going to be a big issue because people are going out to buy new homes at 8%. Developers trying to get access to capital, all this is going to get much higher. And as I mentioned, I believe that the banks are going to have to really cut back all this commercial debt that's coming up. So look, I believe residential housing prices, because no one's willing to sell, you do have some incremental buyers they're probably going to stay readily stable. However, new homes are going to be in a lot of trouble. And I think you're going to see kind of this push-pull where I think the total volume of houses that are getting sold is definitely going to be going down. So what I'm telling everybody to do is just understand, I believe the economy gets a lot worse. This could last another year, 
two years, obviously that creates opportunity. But if you are someone who is dependent on credit cards, dependent on business continuing to do what it did a year ago, or even worse, if you're expecting it to pick up, all those things are gonna be a headwind. And this is why I've been telling people for over a year, get your balance sheets right, raise some liquidity. Remember those car prices that doubled? We saw NFTs, all these crazy things where I told people to take some profits, put it into cash. Look, cash isn't too bad right now. You're getting five and a half and that's gonna be pushing 6% soon with zero risk, full liquidity. Make sure you're not spending your money on stupid stuff right now. You're not taking on a lot of risk right now. Batten down the hatchets. Make sure that you're raising capital. Don't be dependent on a good economy or the bank to bail you out of a situation because it's going to be a tough road ahead.